Have you ever overturned a pile of dead wood like sticks or a decaying log or a pile of scrap plywood and found it just full of bugs? And you're like, oh, these are probably the bad ones like poisonous spiders and centipedes and gross decomposers. Well, actually, probably a lot of those bugs are ones that you like, like pollinators or predators that eat aphids or insects that recycle nutrients in the soil. And they're probably using that pile of decaying matter as their nursery or their home. Today, I'm at my friend Willow's house painting their bug hotel. Willow is a gardener in the Santa Cruz area that specializes in native pollinator gardens, so they know a lot about supporting our bug friends. Many folks in urban and suburban environments consider piles of wood and leaves to be trash, but actually dead organic matter is essential for the lives of lots of insects that we like. And this is important because we are in the middle of a crisis of declining populations of insects, which is probably in large part due to pesticides in agriculture and urbanization, which causes loss of habitat. While our food systems figure out how to get out of their antagonistic relationship with insects, urban and suburban environments can be a safe haven for them. A successful bug hotel is actually pretty similar to a human hotel. It has protection from the elements and also many rooms for guests. It should provide protection from the rain and also be set in the sun to keep it dry, which has a bonus of attracting butterflies to sun on the roof. Willow created this structure out of scrap plywood, but it could also be made out of a ceramic pot, cinder blocks, or bricks. They've created the private guest rooms by packing it with dry bamboo, drilled wood, sticks, grass, and bones. When most of us think of bees, we think of colonial honeybees, but actually 90% of bee species are solitary. The shoots of bamboo are going to be a perfect nest for them. Willow even included a complimentary breakfast for their guests by adding decaying leaves and bundles of grass. The bundles of grass will attract mites, offering a nice breakfast to the meat eaters. It's important that Bug Hotel is not too big because having too many guests in one place can spread disease. This lush, close-up garden scene surrounding the Bug Hotel offers me the opportunity to loosen up and be a bit more indulgent with the way that I paint. In my opinion, close-up foliage looks more lush and realistic when there are many dynamic layers of paint, so I'm basically allowing myself to make lots of mistakes, some of which will prove to be happy accidents and others will be painted over later. The result will be much more dynamic and lush than if I really concentrated at the start and got every form perfect on the first go. In contrast, there are some subjects that I try to capture in one or two thin layers because they have flat surfaces such as buildings, murals, and other objects. For instance, regarding the sides of this bug house, in hindsight I wish I had concentrated on getting it right at the beginning because I think in the end, the many layers of paint made it look a bit mushy. Subjects that are very far away, such as sky or distant hills, should also be completed in as few layers of paint as possible. These thinly painted subjects also offer the opportunity for really bold and elegant brushwork. My natural inclination is to do everything slapdash, so becoming aware of the quality of my concentration has been a really important part of my process. When I found out about bug hotels from Willow, I think it brought out that child in me that loved building fairy houses and imagining worlds for my dolls under bushes or on stream banks. Attending to the needs of tiny creatures through a bug hotel connects me to the wonder and cuteness of a tiny world within a world. It makes me long for a fractilic sense of harmony, where I can zoom all the way down to the microbial world and find harmony, and zoom all the way out to the planet itself and find harmony. Only in this world can I imagine sitting in the middle in true harmony.